Welcome back to Metaphor Math, and we're on to 7C in the set theory chapter of Intro to Analysis by Rosalind. And in this problem, we're showing another set theory, but this time we're dealing with inverse images of sets. So let's get into this right here. So let me just remind ourselves of what an inverse image is, both um, notation-wise and definition-wise, and also pictorially here. Um, so remember that if I have a Z that's a subset of Y, where F is mapping X f is a function that maps elements from x to elements in y, and v is a subset of this, this codomain here, y, then the inverse image of v under f is all the x, all the x in x, so that should be all the x in x here, all the x in x, such that f of x is in v. So all the x in x such that, that are mapped by f and um, end up in V after being mapped by F. So, and this is a little image here. So this is this is all this is the, all the x and x, all the elements in this set x that are mapped by F and end up in the in the set C here, where where C where C is a subset here. C is a subset of Y. C is a subset of Y, and F is mapping x to Y. So. Given all this, let's use this to help us prove 7C here. So let, like, like always, we're going to prove that the left-hand side set is a subset of the right-hand side set, and vice versa, we're going to prove that this right-hand side set is a subset of this left-hand side set here. So let's do that. So we're going to take any general element, let X in this left-hand side set. So let X be an F of negative, or F, excuse me, not F, the inverse image of C union D under F. So let X be in the inverse image of C union D under F. And here we're, uh, I should say that we're trying to prove that the left hand side set, the left hand side set is a subset of the right hand side set. And if we can show that any, any X with this property must be in the right hand side set, then we've shown that all X in here, in this left hand side set, since all X in F, the inverse image of C union D, under F have this property here. And if we then if we can show that this X must also be in the right hand side set here, then we've shown that all X here must be all X in this left hand side set must also be in the right hand side set. So let's get started. So if X is in the inverse image of C union D under F, then that means by our definition, by our definition here, that X, that F of X, the image of X under F must be in C union D, because if F, if X is in the inverse image of C union D, then that means X is in the set of elements in X that are mapped by F to C, C union D. So F of X is in C union D. And that implies that F of X, by the definition of set union, F of X is in C or F of X is in D. And you might be seeing what we can do here, but I'll, I'll say it. I'll say it right now. So since F, F is is mapping X to C here in the first case, if F of X is in C, since X is an element that's mapped by F to C, then that implies that X X is in the set of all elements that are mapped by F to C, or in other words, F is in F, the inver inverse image of C under F, or same same argument for for this for this case of f of x is in D, or x is in the inverse image of D under F, and again we can use the property of or the definition of set union, that implies that x is in F, or the inverse image of C under F union since we have this or here, union, since it could be either this case or this case or both, X is in the inverse image of C under F, union, the inverse image of D under F. And look look at this, we've just done it. We've just shown that this left-hand side set, any element in this left-hand side set must also be in this right-hand side set. And we've, we've shown that this left-hand side set is a subset of the right-hand side set by doing so. 
And let's let's go the other direction. Let's let me let me change colors here. Let's change the yellow. So we're going to show here that the the f of ne of excuse me the inverse image of c under f union the inverse image of d under f is a subset of the inverse image of c union d under f. So we're gonna we're gonna say let x be in the inverse image of C under F, union the inverse image of D under F. And again, if we can show that any X that has this property must also be in this right-hand side set, then we've shown that all X that have this property must also be in the right-hand side set. And because the only property that we're giving X is that it's in this left-hand side set, F, F, the inverse image of C under F, union the inverse image of D under F. And since all x in this left-hand side set have this property of being in the inverse image of c under f, union the inverse image of d under f, then that means, then that means that all x, then that means that all x in this this left-hand side set here must also be in this right-hand right-hand side set here, as long as we are able to show that this specific x that has this property has, and it's not a specific x, it's actually a general x because. This x, the only thing, only property that we're giving x is that this right here, that it's in the, the union of the inverse image of c under f and the union and unioned with the inverse image of d under f. And since all x in here have this property, then if we are able to show that this x must be in this right-hand side set here, the inverse image of c union d under f, then we're able to show, then we're able to show that the, this left-hand side set is a subset of the right-hand side set. So let's get started here. So, so let x be in this union here. So then that means that x, by the definition of the set union, x is in the inverse image of c under f, union the image, or excuse me, by the definition of set union, or, or x is in the inverse image of d under f. And we can say, just like we've done before, where we're using, we're hinging off this definition, if x is in the inverse image of c under f, then that means that it's in the set of all elements in x in the domain of f that are mapped by f to c. So that means that f maps x, or f of x, is in c. And same thing for over here, same thing for, for this part. That means that f of x is in d. And if f of x is in C or f of x is in D, by the definition of set union, f of x is in C union D. And again, since x is an element in the domain x, big X, the set x, x is an element in here such that f of this little x maps this little x to C union D, then that means that x must be in the inverse image of c union d, by definition of the inverse image of c union d. So that means that x is in the inverse image of c union d under f. And we're done. Look at this. We've just shown that the right-hand side set, that any x in here must also be in this left-hand side set here. And we finish.